Bringing in now retired Army Lieutenant Colonel Daniel Davis, senior fellow and military expert with Defense Pri uh, Priorities. Great to see you today. Thank you for being here. Uh, just an eye to the screen. If the Commander in Chief starts speaking, we'll break away and, and cover that because he's at that Police Chiefs Conference in Orlando. Um, what does denuclearization mean uh, when we see missile sites, potential access to those missile sites? Are we getting closer? We are definitely getting closer. And, and to the, your specific question, what does the definition mean? The answer is yes. It depends on who's asking. Everybody has their own independent answer. So the only thing that we can count on is what physically happens and what's physically real. And that's why I think one of the first things you're going to see is that uh, Secretary Pompeo is going to want to come back with, especially after a Trump summit, something concrete in the, in the way of possibly even a list of where these sites are because until mm. you get the list it's hard to get the next steps and I think everything's going to go in a step-by-step -step way and, and Colonel what you're talking about is the first summit you're going to come back and get that list I would want a map <laughs> because after we've seen some some weapons being moved around Syria and other places when people say that they're someplace and they're not real I, I would think that that list would come with a map of those sites as well and well, what does access mean exactly because from what we learned with the Iran deal it didn't mean much well I, in this specific case the the access means access to the Pyongyri uh, site where they're going to dismantle it so that we can actually come in and observe it being dismantled so that we can validate it. we don't have to take anybody's word for that one uh, Colonel can we see some of this movement from our satellites uh, you can see some of it but the thing about these uh, these sites many of them are mobile and they can change around because they know that's why Lights are over us, but those things can move, and that's why it's there's you know it's going to take some time before we can actually get to where we need to go. So I think we should dampen the the idea that anybody thinks that this is you know in an imminent case where all of these things are going to be done in a short period of time because they have to we have to build trust, they have to build trust, and it's going to take a step by step negotiation. What is the difference between being allowed access to a nuclear site and being allowed access to a missile site? They're, they're different things. They are different things, and it's going to take additional steps. And I think this is part of that confidence building process that you see, which I think Secretary Pompeo is right on point with this, and so is the president. They understand that that's going to be necessary. We can't go in and ask for everything right off. So what we do is we start off with intermediate steps. Give us access to this place here. Then give us a list here. Then give us access to those places. So those things are all concurrent, but then we also have to understand that we may have to give up something to get to those other steps like as well. What? Well, we may have to uh, give him some kind of security guarantees that he believes he can trust us or, uh, you know, possibly even maybe move some of the military forces back a stage, a stage as, a, as a symbolic oh, measure. Mm -hmm. Is his life on the line, Kim Jong-un? Uh, in yes. his own country? It, 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 yes, I think it's always the case, which is, from what I understand, this is why, like Saddam Hussein before him, he doesn't ever sleep in the same place at any one time because he mm. doesn't trust his own people. So survival is one of his key things. Uh, <laughs> all right, so this is just from covering media for many, many years. Uh, what we learn with dictators is once you give them a little taste of that spotlight, sometimes they will seek it. I don't know if that will be the case here. I mean, we saw this with Gaddafi, we saw this with others who will kind of stay at the forefront. Um, how important is that as, as part of the calculation in dealing with this? I, I think it should be very important. And we see that uh, unlike both of his father and grandfather before him, he actually likes the spotlight. And, and that can be used to our advantage because he's, he's now talking about a summit with, with uh, Putin. He's talking about a summit with Abe in, in, uh, in Japan. And so he wants to have another one with Trump. The, all of these show that he wants to put a good face out there because he wants to survive and that can be used to our advantage when we're talking about negotiations. And Colonel Davis, is it a good idea? I, I mean, I know the politics of the moment, but but the strategic ideas about it. Is it is it good to keep sitting down with a dictator? We don't have any choice because the security of the United States is what's paramount in this. And we can argue all day long about his human rights violations, and they're horrible and, and just terrible. Yeah, that's not an is, argument. Those they, are just yeah, the that facts. That is not. But the fact is, it's as unpleasant as it is, we have to deal with this guy because he has the controls over our security in terms of what he may or may not do in the he, future. I don't know if people are keeping up with the president's track record on bringing Americans home. But he's doing a job now and bringing them home from some very dark places. And, you know, are we then going to also take a look at some of those human rights violations for citizens who are not American who are in those countries? That, that may come into play at some point. It should come into play. But I, 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 don't, I think we underestimate the, the importance of that, that what the president has done, because he's got men who were in jail. He's brought them home. He's now helping out, uh, you know, our service members, families who have been decades without knowing about their families and put them to rest 
He's now bringing that home. Those are all meaningful things that the president has gotten, which others before him hadn't. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel Davis, thank you very much for coming. The president is about to take the stage in Orlando. I appreciate you being here. Always my Talking pleasure. Talking about North thank Korea, you. so important uh, as the Secretary of State met with the chairman of North Korea, Kim Jong-un, over the weekend.